right now all three atmospheric main greenhouse gas concentrations, the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, they're all accelerating. Are you kidding me? After all that we know and the rush and urgency of what we have to do, we got still fossil fuel coming on big time. Our leaders are not behaving as if we were in an emergency. In an emergency, you change your behavior. The Global South is facing severe effects of climate change. There's some countries here that have a pretty developed fossil fuel addiction. Now, time to act. I've never seen so much failure of governance on an international basis as I see today. We're in a battle against big money. Don't ever stop and think otherwise. And now the Arctic ice sheet, we learn, is melting four times faster than it was ten years ago. Think about that. Palau, 20 years ago, we were talking about adaptation and mitigation. But Palau's not talking a lot about that anymore. They're talking about moving their entire population to somewhere else on planet Earth to live. And talk to the rest of the island states. You don't think their rights, they don't feel that their rights have been violated by a bunch of countries that are chewing up their earth for the purpose of you know, making more money and living out an ethic that is long since lost its sensitivity to the needs of people all over this planet. We have solar that has raced ahead to an 89% reduction in cost. It is now absolutely under any standard by whatever you measure, it is cheaper than coal. No question about it. And by the way, coal has cheated for years. And the financial people have allowed them to do it because nobody has ever done honest accounting. They never account for the cost of black lung disease. They never account for the cost of sludge in the lakes and rivers and streams that steals fishing and, and life from the future. They never account for the fact that you have particulates in the air that affect air quality to such a degree that the largest cost of children being hospitalized in America every single summer is environmentally induced asthma. It costs us $55 billion a year. They don't factor that into the cost. They don't factor the spillage and the damage created in transportation of the fuel. So you put that into it and solar eclipses the cost of coal hugely and dramatically. Right now, we got a whole bunch of people, at least in the United States, who are, who are sitting there with impunity. They can deny the existence and nothing happens to them. Are you kidding me? Nobody should be allowed to deny the existence of climate change. It's the greatest challenge we face in terms of global organization and effort. They, if they do, they need to be removed and replaced by people who will get the job done. That's what we have to do. Hi. To stay below 1.5 degrees, we need to keep the carbon in the ground. Only setting up distant dates and saying things which give the impression of that action is underway will most likely do more harm than good because the changes required are still nowhere in sight. The politics needed do does not exist today despite what you might hear from world leaders. And I still believe that the biggest danger is not in action. The real danger is when politicians and CEOs are making it look like real action is happening when, in fact, almost nothing is being done apart from clever accounting and creative PR. Since the Paris Agreement, global banks have invested 1.9 trillion US dollars in fossil fuels. 
100 companies are responsible for 71% of global emissions. The G20 countries account for almost 80% of total emissions. The richest 10% of the world's population produce half of our CO2 emissions, while the poorest 50% account for just one-tenth. So please tell me, how do you react to these numbers without feeling at least some level of panic? How do you respond to the fact that basically nothing is being done about this without feeling the slightest bit of anger? And how do you communicate this without sounding alarmist? I would really like to know. And my experience is that the lack of awareness is the same everywhere, not the least amongst those elected to lead us. There is no sense of urgency whatsoever. Our leaders are not behaving as if we were in an emergency. In an emergency, you change your behavior. My name is Hilda, I'm a climate activist and I come from Kampala, Uganda. I'm an organizer to Friday's for Future movement in Uganda and this movement calls on government action to combat the climate crisis. There are droughts happening in another part of the country due to massive deforestation and severe effects of climate change, rising temperatures, people are starving. This is uh, very, very, very bad. Uh, we've seen this coming for a while. Now we're on this absolute critical crux of emissions and atmospheric greenhouse gas concentrations whereby, as one of the scientists said this morning, every year matters. So COP25 is yet another um, circus, um, but the acts are absolutely terrible in this circus. It's another delay. Right now, all three atmospheric main greenhouse gas concentrations, the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, they're all accelerating. Carbon dioxide, methane since 2000, and now a paper released this year, nitrous oxide. So all three are on an accelerating trend. Now what does that mean? It means we're on a trend to total planetary catastrophe. We're on a trend to biosphere collapse. We now have an ice core that goes back 2.2 million years. The highest atmospheric CO2 has ever been is 300 in the past two plus million years. We're now at 412, rising fast. We're living in the Kenozoic age now for the past, you know, 60 odd million years. There never has been the richness, the diversity of life on planet Earth as in the Kenozoic, right? Um, uh, that uh, diversity, that richness is being utterly destroyed, both by deforestation and now by climate, cat catastrophic climate change. The countries that are blocking any progress on emissions, they are acting in the most evil way that anybody could imagine because we're looking at the destruction of, we're looking at the destruction of Earth, uh, oceans and land. Without the intervention, without powerful statements by the world scientists, nothing's going to happen. It doesn't matter how much the young people say, they're going to be completely ignored, their lives are going to be written off um, by the negotiating process of what we used to call world powers, right? There has been a massive eruption of methane in the Arctic. It's gone practically unreported. No, we'd never seen anything like it, nothing approaching this. Looking at the 2.2 million year ice core, the maximum methane concentration ever was 800 parts per million. Up in Barrow, Alaska now, it is 2,050 parts per million and staying there. Hundreds of protesters are right behind me, just next to our set, calling for climate justice. You can hear the chant. This 
planet that is, is nothing but a grab for CO2 colonialism. So what we saw in the streets the other day in the mass mobilization, the march, the indigenous peoples who came here from Chile, came here from Ecuador, from Colombia, from Brazil, and us from the north standing with them to denounce and link climate capitalism with neoliberalism, with imperialism, and you know, with the same policies coming out of the United States, a denouncement of this uh, insanity that wants to prioritize Mother Earth. At this moment, Brazil is under a coup d'etat. We have been attacked in many, so many ways. We have been attacked to our democracy, we have been attacked to our forest, and we as originary people, as indigenous people from the forest, are trying to defend what is left of nature.